What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 video. Today we're going to be going over the results of the Fort Wayne Regionals. Sorry, I'm like a day late, but I, I was actually at this event, uh, so you know, I just got home, and uh, I'm actually recording this the morning before work, so it's going to be a little bit of a quicker video. We'll just do a, a nice little overview of what uh, happened at the event, uh, and the sort of teams that we saw. But yeah. Uh, if you enjoy this standpoint in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. That's my comment question of the day. Um, what do you think about Ting Lu? Because it absolutely was like the most common paradox, not paradox, but uh, ruination at this event. So yeah. All right. Uh, so let's get this out of the way. I was completely right. <laughs> I was I was right about two things. So um, the other day I was actually experimenting with a Chen Pao Don Dozo team. Uh, and it had Dragapult and Chen Pao, and I actually made like a video with it. Uh, it won the whole event. Uh, Justin Tang, a two-time regional champion in VGC 2023. I think the last person to do this was Wolf many years ago, uh, but he ended up winning the whole thing with a Choice Band Dragapult and a Chen Pao. Obviously, the combination of these two is really cool because uh, Dragapult is able to be intimidated. It's also immune to extreme speed by opposing Dragonite. Uh, and it gets to take advantage of the defense drop by Sword of Ruin uh, that it gets from uh, Chen Pao here. So yeah, uh, it, it, it's just like a really interesting team. It's a balanced like it's a balanced team with like a hyper offense mode. Obviously, like Amoongus is able to palm puff uh, like a bulky Palafin or like the fatter Fluttermanes and Arcanine that we saw at the at this event, uh, while also being able to go like in hyper offense mode uh, with this defense dropping plus choice band attacking Pokemon. So yeah, uh, also. It's Terra Ghost on the Chen Pao, which means that if you lead off Dra not Dragonite, uh, Dragapult plus Chen Pao, and you end up Terra Ghosting your uh, Chen Pao, uh, it's actually unable to be faked out on lead, which is just super reliable damage and tends to shut down a lot of counterplay. Uh, in second place, we actually had Joe UX9, who did get second place at uh, Charlotte Regionals as well. And if we actually take a look at his team from Charlotte Regionals, let me pull it up real quick. Da, 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 da. Where'd it go? Where is Charlotte Regionals? It literally... It just happened. You know what? I'm gonna look it up. There we go. For some reason, I don't, I don't know. I'm probably just not able to see it because I'm stupid. Uh, but we see here... Joe ran a pretty similar team at Charlotte Regionals. We see Great Tusk, uh, Amoongus, I, I don't know why I tried to say Garchomp, uh, <laughs> Arcanine, Iron Bundle, Minkyu, and King Gambit, uh, where at this event, he ended up running Garchomp, Iron Bundle, uh, Amoongus, Fluttermane, King Gambit, and Talonflame. Uh, it's sort of a similar thing, but you can see that Joe ended up dropping Great Tusk for the Garchomp, and that's not without reason. Uh, Garchomp is actually capable of pretty much just as much damage with uh, its Earthquake, even if it's not able to hit things with a uh, super effective base 120 power ground type move in Headlong Rush. Uh, but it's still super good. We see the combination of like Assurance, King Gambit, plus Booster Energy, uh, Icy Wind, Iron Bundle. We have just like really good hyper offensive mode here. It's 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 sort of balanced, but I feel like it's it's more classified as hyper offense in my opinion. So yeah, Joe played really well. The finals are really intense, and it was just super cool. Getting into the trends of the format, because we you know we can talk about top eight more in depth, but a lot of the teams are pretty similar. Uh, it was the first tournament, so obviously like we haven't really explored a lot of different archetypes, uh, but we did see sun and stuff. But it seems that the most popular team right now is going to be Balance with a Ting Lu. Now, the reason Ting Lu is so valuable is because Ting Lu is a Pokemon that is able to drop everything special attack stat to 75% of what it was before um, and just make things bulkier. It basically gives everything on the field like a little mini assault vest. So if we actually take a look at it, Ting Lu will typically run like a, a more bulky spreads to like live hits. Uh, Stomping Tantrum, like even at like max investment, is still gonna two shot like the same Pokemon because its attack set isn't that big, and the Pokemon that's gonna be KOing uh, for the most part are gonna be more frail things like Fluttermane or Chi Yu. So for that reason, you can actually invest more heavily into your like special defense and HP and just try to sit on the field. However, this is a Pokemon that can actually sit on the field long enough that running the Oko move Fissure is optimal, and I made a video about that weeks ago. And it actually happened. So 
Fissure is a move that has a 30% chance to Oko the target. It doesn't matter the, like the typing, as long as it's not immune, they just get Oko'd. Um, however, with that 30% chance, it can't be increased or decreased by gravity or accuracy. It's just hard-coded into the game, 30% chance. Because it has a 70% chance to fail, the stomping tantrum on the next turn is doubled in power if you miss. So clicking fissure and then stomping tantrum if you miss is the exact same thing as clicking stomping tantrum twice. Thus, if you have a free move slot, which a lot of Tinglu do because they really only need heavy slam and like whatever coverage you want, uh, you might as well run fissure. It helps out versus Dondozo matchups. Uh, it helps out versus Garganical matchups. And honestly, you can just throw one out randomly. Uh, and yeah, like we saw this a lot at the tournament. As a matter of fact, at Sydney Regionals, which I'm not going to cover. I, I might make a separate video for it. Um, at Sydney Regionals, the first move of the first game of of uh, Regulation C was a Wo Chen getting fissured by a Ting Lu. So that was really interesting. Uh, one thing that we do see that was pretty popular was actually Baxcalibur on Ting Lu, uh, because Baxcalibur, like, it, it isn't, like, specially frail, but uh, Bax Ting Lu will be able to uh, tear onto whatever type it needs to, like, resist a hit from Fluttermane, and then, like, live the hit, and then KO it with, like, Ice School Spear or whatever move. Sometimes you would even see, like, Swords Dance uh, on the uh, on the uh, Baxcalibur to get, like, a setup or Dragon Dance, which was really useful. Another, like, breakout Pokemon actually was... Gyarados because it helped to deal with Ting Lu. It was able to uh, go for taunts versus support Pokemon like Amoongus and stuff. It was able to hit Ting Lu with super effective waterfalls, uh, possibly causing a flinch. And also next to Ting Lu, it isn't that bad because Gyarados is a Pokemon that already has like some pretty good uh, special defense. If we actually take a look at its stats, like Gyarados can be like a support Pokemon and an offensive Pokemon. You could run like waterfall taunt uh thunder wave was like super common on it for speed control uh and the final move you could also just trade up run dragon dance if you really wanted to so yeah it was it was a really cool pokemon it's an intimidator uh it's fast it's super special defensive and it really likes being next to ting lu so i think it's going to continue to be popular uh since it actually did perform pretty well across the board but i don't think it's going to be like the best pokemon in the format uh other things oh i guess i should talk about like how i placed uh, I ended up getting 79th overall. Uh, I went six and three, uh, which was, you know, I, I, I am gonna cover the team that I used more in depth on my Patreon, because now that I'm actually like going for Worlds invites, uh, I don't wanna like make all the teams that I use super public. So if you guys want like the full breakdown on my run, uh, that'll be up on Patreon this week. Uh, but yeah, I, I just wanted to let you guys know. Yes, I did do pretty well. I, I was just one match away from making day two, which is the same thing as Charlotte Regional. So I'm at uh, 80 points, but yeah, uh, other things that we saw, uh, we didn't see a lot of Wo Chen stall beyond like my team and a few others. Uh, Chi Yu was pretty common, but it wasn't as common as um, Chen Pao. And I think the reason is Chi Yu feels like more of a possible detriment to your team because, you know, Chen Pao is like lowering everything's defense. If you have like a fast physical attacker, it's like whatever, you just pick up KOs. You can control the field with like extreme speed Dragonite and stuff. Um, but where with Chi Yu, there are so many Fluttermane in the format that that speed tie or possible Fluttermane just straight up being faster than you could end up throwing the match because now your entire team is like super frail and you just get KO'd. But yeah, um, I think the most common Pokemon that we saw in this format beyond Fluttermane was actually, it's it's like a toss-up between Dragonite and Amoongus. Amoongus was like such a staple on balance for supporting things because this format, like there are so many heavy hitters, but also so many bulky teams that Amoongus could just show up on a team and like keep it alive forever. Uh, a lot of Amoongus I saw this week were Citrus Berry or Rocky Helmet. They ran Regenerator and they were just running like that standard Pollen Puff, uh, Rage Powder, uh, Protect and Spore set which was, you know, it's obviously like super reliable. Um, and it actually helps out quite a bit versus Glamora since there were a lot of Glamora in the in the tournament. What this thing could actually do was Glamora would get like, it's it's like spikes up, right? And you have like a, a Terra Poison Mon. A lot of teams would run Terra Poison. Let's see if I can find one on this team. Yeah, we see Terra Poison on the Bax Caliber and the Ting Lu. So because there's an Amoongus on this team, what you could actually do is Terra Poison your Ting Lu and protect on the Mortal Spin from the uh, opposing uh, 
Glamora and then just swap out into your Amoongus to prevent the poison. KO the Glamora and then you have Pokemon that can switch in and out of the field to remove the toxic debris from the field, uh, allowing you to protect every Pokemon from getting poisoned. So that that's like something that was like really important in this in this tournament. I think it was just something that people need to acknowledge is like standard and it might end up switching the way that uh, people run their Glamoras to maybe possibly run Corrosion over that. So yeah. Uh, we didn't see a lot of mouse ape. Actually, I don't think there was a single mouse ape in top cut, but there was like one in day two. Uh, yeah, mouse ape. And then I think that was like the only mouse ape actually. Oh, here's a second one. Yeah, there were two mouse apes in day two, which was interesting because a lot of people were really scared of it uh, and they had to prepare for it, even though like they almost never faced it. Other trends uh, that we see here. I think that Arcanine might be the best Pokemon in the format, Loki. Uh, Arcanine is able to run like a super bulky set and burn a lot of the physical attackers. It can eat like an, in a, a choice band extreme speed in Sword of Ruin from Dragonite and go for the burn. It's able to tank whatever hit it needs to from basically any one of the Ruinous Legends and hit it back or respond with like a Will-O-Wisp or whatever move it really needs to. Extreme speed stocks are higher than ever with how frail a lot of the Pokemon in the format that aren't like running the bulk. Like, there's, the format's bulky, don't get me wrong, but there are a lot of Pokemon in the format that can just be picked off. You know, um, Talonflame is still going to be super popular, like that can get picked off by ex extreme speed. Chi Yu is relatively frail if they don't invest, that can be picked off by extreme speed. Fluttermane will tend to tear a fairy a lot, it's another extreme speed uh, target. And like, you know, there's still Focus Ash, Great Tusk, and a few other things that just, extreme speed stocks are just straight up through the roof right now. Uh, other things, other things. Honestly, I think that this format is a lot more similar to Ser Regulation uh, B or Series 2 than we like really gave it credit for. I think people thought that the Ruin Pokemon would be more common than they would be. Uh, but here we can see that there are plenty of teams that just don't run a Ruin. Like here you don't see it, right? But we actually just noticed that in Top Cut, yes, all these teams have a Ruin. But Joe went to second place without a single Ruin. I think Joe's team is going to end up being like a, an example for other teams as to how you can run a team without a ruin and still succeed because it isn't really mandatory by the way you know here's the plug uh if you guys want coaching joe does coaching at the x9 academy uh his website is just x9academy.com friend of the channel uh you know if, if you want to get better at the game definitely check out joe's stuff uh i am personally working with joe right now and i plug him at, on my videos because i i think he's uh a really cool dude and uh, his coaching is very helpful and yeah so you know make sure you check out Joe and because uh, I don't offer coaching but yeah <laughs> just want to throw that in there uh, I, I think that's basically it as, as far as what I want to talk about for this tournament I don't think it was as game changing as people thought it would be a lot of these archetypes we knew would be showing up uh, to the tournament before it started we haven't really seen anything really break out other than Joe's team with absolutely no like ruins so yeah um, if you guys enjoyed, I guess, you know, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I really don't really have much else to say about this. I think it was all very much what we expected. Uh, have a nice one. Bye.